Hello, welcome to the Andreas Carbonell podcast, where we discuss ideas, science and philosophy. Today we're going to talk about testosterone. Yes, just about the hormone. I'm going to quote the author Carl Hooven and it's the hormones that dominate and divide us. And this is very important, not only for men or for women, but for both, because they affect both genders in different ways, either directly or their interactions in the social behavior. And this is quite a, it, it kind of affects a lot of our behavior. And I'm going to touch different topics about this, which for many people will find quite interesting. And there are things that you can apply directly in your life about this. And I hope you guys like it. And here we go. We should first start with what it is testosterone and what is not. So testosterone is anabolic, an anabolic asteroid and is one of the body's major sex hormones. Men usually have 15 fold more testosterone at any moment than women. And this is, of course, is one of the reasons or, or one of the major causes of many physical difference between men and women. When one hear about testosterone, or what are the effects, one can know some direct effects in the body that are directly related. And it's the stereotype of, for example, bodybuilders that take esteroid or, or some of them that abuse. What is for their, what did they use them for? For, for example, to increase the bus, the muscle and the bone mass, hemoglobin creation. And of course, it's always associated with the growth of body hair, which is a sign also of high testosterone. This is one of the div reasons why during puberty, because of the high levels of testosterone, men develop more body hair than women. It also is not only linked to physical effects. So yes, of course, we talk about muscle and, and bone mass, which directly affects, for example, athletic performance, but it's also directly related with our behaviors. And I want to focus a lot in this podcast about how it affects our behaviors. It's generally associated with good mood, motivation, and even reports of well-being. And of course, one of the major things people know about it is that it affects the libido, especially in, in experiments or, or women that have used um, testosterone replacement, they report a quite increase in libido. The same was with men, but this, is, this effect is even more pronounced or even more obvious with women. And what is known is that testosterone makes effort feel good give people a motivational drive. Usually also, also associated to having less fear and being more resilient or more resilience or having less stress. And the way it is describing evolution is, especially for men, testosterone drive men for status seeking behavior. So if we go to basic biology or what the main, let's say, drive of creatures, of course, born, they're born, they grow, they want to reproduce and they want to survive. And especially for humans, there's one of, of ancestral humans characteristics for survival is, of course, having more strength, more physical power. So that's why maybe there is a evolutionary um, a evolution drives people, dri drive men to, to evolve to have more testosterone, but also for status seeking, because this is very important when looking for a mate. And this is some, sometimes people want to understand about big things between the behavior between men and women and how we think differently. And there is a, a great portion of how, let's say, in in the men way of viewing things, of of driving to get status. I'm not saying women doesn't want to get status or doesn't have this drive, but it's different how it manifests. And this is in, in part a lot of how 
testosterone drives this in humans. Something I think is important to clarify is that many of the, let's say, phenotypes or effects associated, associated to testosterone are not only drive by testosterone. There's, of course, a lot of genetic and epigenetic changes that are or differences between individuals that also affect a lot of that and also the environment. So one should not see it as a black or white, but rather as, okay, if we add a lot of testosterone or we decrease the amount of testosterone to a mixture, and it also depends on the environment of the individual, what's happening? What is causing this? So let's talk a little bit about some effects in behavior. I think it's important to mention that, and this is a technical thing, and I think for, I'm not an expert in testosterone, hormones, or endocrinology, but people might differ a little bit on how you interpret certain data based on how testosterone is measured. So, of course, I would say the people would imagine testosterone is measured through blood, and then you can also measure the bound testosterone, the free testosterone, and these results can be interpreted differently. Of course, measuring from the blood is not something easy, it's not something you can do so fast compared to, for example, a saliva test. So usually many studies, because of the resources and how fast and how much you can collect, will use saliva as a proxy to measure, or the because you can measure testosterone saliva, we use this to measure as a proxy for, in general, of the general levels of testosterone in the body. I'm not an expert to say if this is completely true. If many, maybe some endocrinologists will say the levels in the saliva are not the best correlation to the total testosterone in the body. It goes study by study to see how they measure it. But this is something to have in mind. So, okay, let's go into the research a little bit and let's talk about what are certain things associated with testosterone or lower testosterone. So, Many research indicate that testosterone levels are influenced also by the chemosensory signals emitted by females or environmental cues. Of course, as I, I was saying, um, testosterone drive status-seeking behaviors. And this could be many things. And of course, the higher the status, the higher the possibility of mating. So when a male can in contact with females, usually would increase the testosterone production. And this is to drive a status signal behavior that could give him higher chances of reproduction. This makes sense in evolution. Those, and let's think about, always think about why or how evolution works. Let's say we separate them, the two. Let's say we have an individual which testosterone drives a status seeking behavior, an individual where does, it's not producing testosterone for this status seeking behavior. Through time, those seeking status behavior had higher chances of reproduction, so this one became the majority in the population. Those that didn't were just never reproduced and where their genes just were, let's say, forgotten or into oblivion. Let's put it this way in, in more, uh, in different terms. So this is something to think about it. Okay, so why these behaviors are selected? why something like testosterone will be so important is because of selection. If you have something to discuss or increase your chance of reproduction, this will be selected against anything that is, let's say, not doing that. So yes, when men or males see females, especially if they find it very attractive, they will release more testosterone. This, of course, makes sense. Also, certain environmental cues could also do it. One thing is about seeking status, and the other thing is about maintaining status. And it depends, of course, in the context. Testosterone is always associated with aggressivity. And the thing, the reality is that many studies doesn't find this association. Rather, is that individuals that are aggressive might be more aggressive in, with increased testosterone. Individuals that are usually not aggressive might not necessarily be more aggressive driven by more testosterone. What is something that is really associated with testosterone is lower fear, of course. So having low, lower fear will have you less inhibition 
to engage in, let's say, a fight or risk-taking behaviors. So there's also cues, even for females, to detect levels of testosterone in men. And this, is, of course, is a survival mechanism. One could think that the, the a female will be attracted to males with, that produce high testosterone because will not only be, let's say, stronger males, like physically, like higher bone mass, muscle, maybe faster, um, they would also seek status, which status could also be translated to more resources, which also increase the chances of survival in the, when there is, you know, lack of food, lack of resources. You want to have, if you're a female and you're pregnant, you prefer to be pregnant by a male that is able to gather more resources in general. So this is also a selection for female to have mechanism to detect high testosterone in men. Of course, this is not the only thing they're looking for. It's more complicated. And these high testosterone, these phenotypes are associated to testosterone can be also associated to genetic factors or also a mixture with environmental factors. So let's talk about some of the research which I found very interesting is that we know testosterone can drive libido and, and status-seeking behavior. But if we think about evolution, for example, for a female perspective, you want to get a mate, you got to get a male, but you also want this male to stay. You don't want to this status-seeking behavior, this, let's say, mate-seeking behavior to be always active in men. Because, of course, if a man has, let's say, many partners, many females, then and then have many, let's say, offspring, many babies, there's chances that either this offspring doesn't get enough resources or the resources that the male can acquire are divided. So for a female perspective, you want, if possible, your mate to have less possible mates so the resources are less divided. When there's lack of resources, it's different if you get low food that may or may not be enough for your baby. So there is even mechanisms that are being reported in the literature that are also associated of with how testosterone is regulated even by how the women persuade them. For example, there is studies that show that female tears decrease the testosterone levels in men. And this is a way to dissuade aggression, for example, or to dissuade um, this mate-seeking behavior in their partner. I think for many men, or, or in general, if they see women crying, they change a lot their behavior. And this is something everyone can relate to that. And there are studies that associate the change of behavior of men seeing female tears on lowering the testosterone level. So, for example, um, a man that are exposed to the scent of women near ovulation have higher testosterone levels than men that are exposed to the scent of women that are far from ovulation. How this works, of course, still to, to be learned. Maybe there is pheromones. There is still, to my understanding, no pheromones ever reported for men. They, for humans, they, they believe they exist, but there's no so far reported one. Um, but this is makes sense, right? Maybe there is some evolutionary strategy where men can detect women in ovulation because, of course, if it's ovulating, higher chances of pregnancy, higher chances of producing a baby, makes more sense. The, the men will select for that. What other things can affect testosterone? Let's think about some of the literature, some things I found very interesting. Um, one thing that they have measured is that competition drives a lot of testosterone levels. And this is, there's many effects about this. The anticipation and the result of the competition could affect the testosterone levels. So there are some studies that show that the anticipation, for example, of a fight or a big competition has a lot of meaning, maybe a lot of status behavior, a status uh, result can increase or decrease the testosterone. Of course, before a fight, let's say, the testosterone will, will increase because it, it decreases the fear, it might increase the the hemoglobin production, might be necessary for, you know, good mood, 
to be able to win the fight, which is also a survival mechanism. If you lose the fight, you die, you don't reproduce. It's a point like that. That's why it increases. And depending on the outcome of this competition, it could also be a way that modulates the testosterone. And when you win, testosterone increases. And when you lose, there is also a report that it decreases. And there is some, um, like I was reading about, like I was mentioning at the beginning from the author, from Carl Hooven, and one perspective of why this, this happens is just lower of testosterone could be associated to as a modulation of behavior. For example, if two males are fighting and one of them lost but still alive, there might be evolutionary selection for this male not to engage again into a fight with this male after already losing because it will maybe this time cause maybe higher damage or even death. So it's like a it's like okay, let's stop this behavior. We we try to fight, we lost, okay. Better maybe lower testosterone to lower a little bit of aggression. This will also increase a little bit of fear. If you lower testosterone, you will have let's say less inhib more inhibition for, for things. So this is an acquired behavior. The opposite is also true. Of course, if you win, then you probably get more status, and this could drive more status seeking behaviors. Now, let's think other things that are very important for testosterone. Here are some of my notes. Um, and something also I found really interesting about testosterone, and there are some studies that are, especially with women, because women, of course, have 15 times lower testosterone than men. And we know that men and women perceive the world very differently, even though people these days want to say the opposite. If you've been, if you're a male, you know a female, you know they see the world differently. And this is good. This is good that we see the world differently. None one is correct. No one is incorrect. I think you need both. And there are things that for some specific occasions, you need either or the other and make it better. And I don't know how significant can be this, this study, but there is... Um, there was one study where they were administrating testosterone to young females. Of course, they have low testosterone, you increase the testosterone, any significant effect here could be measured. And apparently, I'm not sure how any expert would say it, you can really measure like this, but the ability of infer emotions and intentions and feelings were inhibited on these, on these females after giving this testosterone. And this of course says, okay, why could this be interesting? It could be like evolutionary significance. And again, thinking about evolution, let's say a man is preparing for battle. And this is survival. It's either you die or you survive. And if your your empathy levels are so high about your opponent, it might be counterproductive during the fight. I mean, at some point, maybe this male-to-male -male fight, fight will kill one or the other. And in order to not be killed, maybe you have to kill. And this is, of course, we live in society and this is not the case anymore, luckily. But in other times, this was the case. There, there was a survival, maybe competing for a mate, maybe competing for very limited resources, and or just a fight for, for dominance. And having less empathy, less, let's say, regard of the emotions of the opponent of the other people could be an advantage. So, of course, if testosterone can decrease the empathy or, or, the, or how you infer emotions of other people, might be an advantage during the fight. And this is, of course, in, 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 in for females, is differently, that have lower testosterone, usually is always associated females to be better at reading emotions, intentions, and to have more of these, um, you know, this another sense to feel how people are feeling, these empathic behaviors. And makes sense also that then if you add testosterone, if this is the real reason of this, and maybe there's more things involved, that this will decrease this in, in, in females. 
And this is also something that is always um, reported is that, for example, when men have children, their base testosterone levels decrease. And this could also help men, for example, to be more empathic to the children, to understand the feelings. Because, you know, high testosterone, high, low empathy, high aggressivity, low fear might be very important when you're in a fight. But it's not the same when you're raising a baby. For a baby, fear might be a very good thing because you want your baby to survive. They, you have to be afraid things can happen to the baby. You also want to follow the emotions. Baby cannot control their emotions properly, so you have to understand when the baby has their needs because these are your genes that will survive. So there are some behaviors that have been selected through evolution to be able to take care of babies better. This is one. So, of course, this is when testosterone played the role. In case of females, they are generally lower testosterone, then they have this better... Um, to infer emotions, to have sympathy, empathy of the children. And of course, this is not the only cause. Don't quote me that testosterone is the only cause of this. Of course not. There's many other things, but this is one significant thing that could be measured and can be associated to that. And this is important to make the distinction. In measuring, there's experimentation, how much you can relate the behavior to the hormone. It depends on how you interpret the data. I'm just presenting the data here, you can interpret it a different way. Maybe if you got into the data of the different research papers, it's different how you interpret this. But yeah, but I think it's pretty clear that how this hormone is quite strong. So we can put and proclaim many effects to this. Something else that I found very interesting, and this is of course now being more studied as well with um, testosterone replacement. Something we need to understand is that our hormones change over time. It's very well known, let's say, in the society how female hormones are regulated over time and then when they go to menopause, how the hormonal changes affect many physical things. What people don't usually are aware is that testosterone for men decreases over time. And not only decreases over time, it just affects a lot of the behaviors of how men at different ages are because of these levels of testosterone. And another fact, which is something it could be for a whole discussion of another podcast, is that the testosterone levels in men of the same age have been decreasing in the last decades. That means that men of the same age, let's say 50 years ago, 40 years ago, had higher levels of testosterone to males today. Why is that? There are many theories. There could be many reasons. Could also be technical reasons how these things are measured. But it's something that's been reported and we could discuss this about in another podcast. But coming back to the effects of testosterone in behavior, and something which, as I mentioned, testos testosterone makes effort feel good. It increases your mood and motivation. And many men, when they get to a little bit older age, and they can measure their testosterone levels decrease, and then they go for a testosterone replacement therapy. I'm talking about the proper... Um, therapy with the endocrinologist. This is not for bodybuilding. This is controlled by a medical doctor, which will take the, the appropriate test and will give the amount of testosterone that is really needed in order to increase the quality of life of these patients. This is not the same as these, what we hear about steroids that are used for bodybuilders. Okay, it's increasing testosterone, but this is one is talking about a medically graded thing and the other one is just for different um, goals. And many of these men report that after testosterone replacement therapy, the life changes in a way very positive. They feel, report, more motivated, higher strength, of course, easier to build muscle and strength for physical and athletic performance and increase the mood, motivation, 
and of course this status seeking behavior which is many positive in, depending on, on which aspect you put it of course the status seeking behavior could lead people to do bad things but it could also lead people to do great things and improve the quality of life of everyone so also it helps to decrease let's say stress and anxiety so it's important for men in general no matter what is your age to every now and then do a blood test and include testosterone it might be that you could be suffering of low testosterone there are some reports of even people that have brain accidents let's say they got a concussion or they got hit in their head and remember hormones are also regulated by the brain there are specific sectors in the brain that regulate hormone production especially testosterone release and i'm gonna go into details about this maybe for other podcasts how hormones are regulated but this is very important to know so even trauma to the brain can affect your testosterone levels and people don't know that and it's important to know that because someone that's suffering accident might have some effects in their life quality and they don't know why and this could even be solved by testosterone replacement so i think it's very important and i think something governments should change and should also for for supporting let's say men in general is that this should be included in insurances in some insurances depending on where you're living in which part of the world women have access to measuring their hormones which is great is something that increases the quality of life to know what's your hormone levels this should also be open for men because this affects the quality of life also having men with good testosterone levels followed by a appropriate medical doctor increasing the mood increasing motivation better output also better relationship with your family better for society so this is very important i think it's something that you want to have in a society the hormone levels to be good as i mentioned before um testosterone of course drives status seeking behaviors and this is not only important for the men but it's also important for for males but also for females either for females to also be driven which is also driven by testosterone and their status seeking behavior in a different extent than compared to men but also for females in their mate selection there is a lot of evolved mechanisms which females will detect the levels of testosterone in men by proxy effects of course females could not just go and measure the testosterone in the blood of their possible mate but their cues that they found more attractive and this is just of course theories of attractions of attraction what one find attractive and this can be a little bit controversial but there is a lot of let's say arguments of why this is true or why there's a, a possibility of this is makes a lot of sense and of course again repeating it's not just testosterone that causes it there's a lot of other things involved genetics environment but it's one of the reasons and these specific physical physical cues and behavioral cues that females find attractive are also in somehow regulated by testosterone and this of course helps in the survival of the offspring if you select a good mate that can gather resources your offspring have higher chances of survival there's also in biology the sexy son hypothesis or theory and what is this that females doesn't also want to have for their own survival in the moment to have a, a a a male for example that could protect them physically and gather resources and you know provide for the family and and, and everything but also the good genes that would make their offspring their sons good um apt for survival so of course let's say high testosterone is associated with certain genetic things females maybe unconsciously think okay if i select a mate with high testosterone that can survive more and start seeking behavior then there's a high chance my own offspring and sons will also have it higher chances of survival higher chances my genes will go through generations of course organisms are not maybe directly consciously thinking oh i want my genes to go in the next generation 
but if there's a selection for that, the genes just are selected. Those that didn't, they just didn't reproduce. And this is the main, let's say, conceptual idea of how, why these mate selection behaviors are selected. There's not necessarily conscious, but they just drive and they just allow these genes to survive. And of course, there's the male characteristics that divide them from, from females. For example, the penis and the testes, uh, of course, this is a directly related to testosterone to being a male, that of course, females will already use as a cue to know it's a male. This is, of course, obvious to what you understand. But there are other cues that females find attractive. For example, a deep voice. And this is usually happens during puberty. A deep voice not only signifies, let's say, a adult male, but also there is links of a deeper voice linked to higher testosterone levels during puberty. Also, facial hair, especially uh, uh, facial hair, um, hair in the body, muscle size and strength, um, bone growth and strength, maybe the height. Height, of course, is associated with levels of testosterone. It's not the only thing. You can also be shorter person with high testosterone. It's just one thing that is associated as well. The sex drive also sperm production. And there is known that boys that suffer from endocrine problems usually cannot develop properly in many of these characteristics. And we know, for example, let's say muscle size is quite a thing that many females find attractive. If you have more muscles, you find more attractive. And this is somehow related to testosterone. And as I mentioned, testosterone is not only regulated genetically, but also by the environment. So if you are part of behaviors that increase your testosterone and you have a higher muscle production, then this is a cue that females will find attractive. So this is also not only the genes, but also how the environment affected. And let's say also risk-taking behaviors. As I said, it's very important for surviving, for um, status-seeking behaviors, females will find this attractive. To what extent? There's a limit. Of course, too high risk taking behaviors will maybe make males not able to survive because taking, let's say, risk that should not take. So there might be a limit to that. Of course, this is not black and white. This is how you perceive it. Also, males that compete and win usually are also attractive to females. That's why you see many, let's say, or females attracted to, let's say, sport like people in sports that win competitions even in a sport that doesn't really mean anything about resource acquisition but it means a lot in, in status acquisition and that's why they will find it attractive also then we can say in conclusion that having a a less inhibition for risk taking behaviors will increase the chances of taking more risks, for example, let's say in career or entrepreneurship or just in general survival, which will may relate to gather more resources. So this cue will be attractive for many females. So this all are a big package. And this is not black or white. You see, that's a whole thing that could be interesting to understand. And now I want to talk a little bit about what are signs of lost testosterone or what cause testosterone to decrease? I mean, we already talked about some of the behaviors can cause it. For example, losing a competition can lower your testosterone temporarily, it's not forever. But certain things like age, of course, also um, being exposed to toxins. And this is quite a polemic topic to see which toxin really affects testosterone. I don't want to go into specific thing. There is some good literature about it where it's reported and this could go for a whole podcast of our, or how to optimize your testosterone levels based on toxin exposure. Something that is very clear that affects the level of testosterone is your weight and your BMI. Well, maybe BMI is not the best uh, proxy, but the weight. So overweight men, I'm talking not over, I'm talking about this lot of fat will lower your testosterone levels. And also having a lot of fat will increase your est estrogen levels. So this is also for another topic just to talk about estrogen, but 
maybe for a male, you want to have higher T, lower estrogen in general. Um, what are signs of lack of testosterone in men? Weakness, low energy, low motivation, even certain signs of depression. Um, also, of course, lower libido or probably with sexual function could be also of low testosterone. Again, many of these men that started, older men that started with older gentlemen that started with testosterone replacement, they report having more libido and better, let's say, a sexual life. Um, also, problems with cognition. I think it's important for men and even for for parents, for their own boys, also for their own girls as well, or humans in general, everyone, should measure their hormone levels and monitor them and go, and if something goes out of the, what should be out of range, maybe it's a good idea to visit an endocrinologist that could guide you better. There are things that also could improve your testosterone directly. And this, of course, if you ever measure your, I will just give you this advice. If you ever go, for example, and you go to doctor and you want to have a blood test to measure your testosterone, your free testosterone and unbound testosterone, you should be aware that certain thing that you did the same day or the day before could affect your levels, which may be the reason that they could be lower than they should be. And this may not be that your general life is like that, but just because of what's happening in the moment. For example, if you didn't sleep properly that day before, there's higher chance that you'll have a lower testosterone. So if for some reason you didn't sleep well, I will recommend don't go and measure your testosterone because it probably will be lower than it is in average. The same way, I will recommend to sleep properly so you have good hormone levels. Not only for this, but for many other reasons, having seven to eight hours or even more hours of sleep per day is very important for your general well-being. Proper nutrition, having enough food of everything you need, having a balanced diet, doing exercise. Both cardio and weightlifting are very important to increase the levels of testosterone. This is well known and also for general being and many other benefits, not just your hormone levels. Competing. I think competing is something that is very important. And many people, ah, society is making now that competing is not good. Competing is everyone should win. And this is not the way life or our bodies are programmed. Of course, I think everyone should find things that they like and they can do healthy competition. For example, if you're into sports, competing in the sports, of course, you will win and lose, but the general program of being of, of improving yourself will make your level, your hormonal levels better. And this is true. It is part of why you feel some motivation. Of course, there are many other things involved, but it is one of these many aspects. And if you do any hobby, any hobby that involves any competition, it could also be getting better with yourself. If you compete with your own self, something you want to improve, this is also very good. Having good habits. Um, something that is very important is a well-balanced social life, especially with the opposite sex. This is true for both men and women. So, want to have better hormones, have a better, re good relationship with the opposite sex. And important, if you want to have a good relationship with the opposite sex, of course, having a taking care of your body. So be doing sports, staying fit, will increase your chances of the opposite sex and attractive, will also make you feel better, will also increase your, your let's say, your in general <laughs> relationship with the opposite sex. Would, yeah, I'm repeating myself here, but I guess, I guess you understand what I'm trying to say. If you look good, People will like you better. This is the truth of our reality. And you will feel better. So put a lot of emphasis on sports and staying fit, having a healthy diet. And avoid things like smoking or drinking. I know social drinking and I think you can avoid it as well. If you can decrease that to very special events, your 
you will see many positive changes in your life. I will, I will suggest that. And also avoiding toxins. Which toxins? This is for another podcast. It's too much to drive in into the literature. I don't want to make this so long. And there is also some studies and there is some, let's say, cultural um, representation that certain herbs help in increasing testosterone. I don't want to. Do I don't want to go into this before doing proper research, but there is association with certain herbs. And lastly, I want to conclude that I think in general people should understand their hormones. Don't be afraid of them. Don't also don't be affected by how now our culture has changed trying to to not give so much weight on biological effects and biological factors and rather put more factors to culture and environment. Of course, culture and environment is very important, but our biological differences are very important. And this is something one you have to monitor for proper well-being. It's good to have good mental health. It's also very important to have a good physiology, which is directly linked to your mental health both ways. So and my to end this podcast here, I hope you guys like it. I hope you guys learn a lot. Both men and women can profit from this. And in your next visit of the doctor, maybe ask or do a blood test and check your testosterone levels. It could be something that could change your life if you discover something that shouldn't be like that. Thank you very much for listening. I wish everyone here to have a great day, to stay safe, live your life, and see you guys. Thank you.